Oh, hey there. Hey. The future is one of the easiest yet hardest things to write about. It's open-ended, but forces you to come up with ideas to scare and impress your readers. So let's look at some of the most powerful villains from the future that we haven't met yet. Mind blowing. <laughs> I'm Connor Monroe. And I'm Taylor McWaters, and this is the top 10 most powerful futuristic Marvel villains. Let's do it. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Maestro. The Maestro first appeared in Hulk Future Imperfect. Now this is a crazy version of the Hulk, of course from an alternate future, a hundred or so years later. Now this is after the world has fallen apart due to a nuclear war. Nearly every superhero had been killed off at this point. It was a grim future, that's for sure. Now radiation was killing off average Joes like us, but for the Hulk, I mean, he just absorbed all of this. He got stronger, and dare I say it, he got smarter. The only way to defeat this older, now bearded Hulk was to go back in time using Doom's time machine and using that first gamma explosion to wipe him off the map so he never existed. I hope we can see this guy in the MCU. He can connect with astral beings, so maybe Strange We'll have him in some alternate reality in the next Doctor Strange sequel. Fingers crossed, I'm hoping. And at nine, Gore. Gore, also known as Gore the God Butcher, was born on a planet with no name. Almost every day was spent starving with no food. He was taught to trust in the gods, but they never answered his prayers. At an early age, his mother and father died, leaving Gore to fend for himself, which sucks even if you aren't on the brink of starvation. Years later, he married and fathered some children. However, most of them died. Man, this guy has a great life. Gore's pregnant spouse, Aura, was also killed during an earthquake, and one by one, his children started dying off until he was left with his one son. Agar. He lost faith that the gods he was taught to trust even existed, but when he learned that they did in fact exist, he sought to punish them for not saving his family, despite his desperate pleas. Which I guess is an understandable reaction, but if I found out gods like Thor, Odin, and Zeus, and Hades actually like existed, I wouldn't think that they could hear my prayers. Cause like, even if they're gods, they're still in a way, people, right? Plus, a, a, a god killer, it's very forward thinking. Number 8, Ravona. AKA Terminatrix, okay. Ravona Renslayer made her first appearance in Marvel Comics with Avengers issue 23. She was the daughter of King Kirillius, a ruler in the 40th century. It was the last civilization that wasn't conquered by Kang at this point, but Kang spared them because he caught feelings for Ravona. Can't help it, you gotta follow the heart. She refused to share the love because he wasn't royalty, but he was determined to win her over. He was so determined that he summoned the Avengers to that timeline just to fight them and embarrass them, and then in turn, impress her. Now it worked because in the following issue, when everybody's making a run for it, she can't leave him. Kang knows even this is a bad idea, but love is love, baby! You gotta do what you gotta do. So if he marries Ravona, Baltag will go against him with Kang's troops, and Baltang did do this. And when he attacked Kang, Ravona jumped in the way using her last breath to tell Kang she indeed loves him. Cut to Avengers issue 267, Prime Kang was able to go back in time and save her. He altered reality so another version of him died instead of Ravona. How sweet slash confusing. Ravona's awesome. We get to see her in Loki and I'm really hoping we get her alternate side as well, the Terminatrix. She's much more of a big deal than the show has revealed yet. She once disguised herself as Nebula in order to infiltrate the council of cross time Kangs. She's kind of a big deal. And it's Seven Cron Stone. Kron Stone is actually the son of Tyler Stone and the older half-brother of Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, as revealed later on in his series. Kron became a violent person after years of suffering not at the hands of his father, but rather an android housekeeper. Yeah, this, this dude thought their robot maid was so bad that he went nuts and ended up killing Punisher 2099's family, the Gallows family. This was also before gaining superpowers, since after nearly getting killed by Jake Gallows, the Punisher of 2099, Kron fell into a sewer and floated into this strange black ball. This black ball was somehow the mutated form of the Venom symbiote that had survived without a host for all this time, I guess. The symbiote bonded with Kron and they became Venom 2099. This new version of Venom had also gained acidic blood and saliva, so that's a pretty gnarly power right there. So safe to say, Venom 2099 is a pretty futuristic version of the symbiote, especially if you look at him. Hot damn. Number 6. Cronarch. Not to be confused with the 64th century ruler from DC Comics, Cronarch was once a regular man, and he first appeared in Defenders Volume 2, Issue 12. He was a janitor working for a research group who, of course, spilled something that changed his life forever. He spilled something on the Chrono Scepter, so in turn, it opened up this time vortex, and out came, you guessed it, 
dinosaurs. Yeah, dinosaurs that he could control. So yeah, I had to include this villain. This guy is nuts. The Cronarch then made a cool suit of armor, of course, to fit the whole theme. And then he set up a camp in an abandoned theme park and ran operations until the Defenders showed up to save the day. Now, I'm upset here because the Defenders sent the dinosaurs back to their time, their doom timeline, which we all know, instead of just opening a Jurassic Park. Come on guys, think, profit. Come on, you're Marvel, you're Disney, you like money, do this. Halfway through into number five, Technarchy. We all love a good alien invader storyline. They always give us ideas of what to do and what not to do if we ever end up in the same situation making first contact. However, in Marvel's 2099 series, one race of aliens known as the Technarchy is not only a badass name, but the absolute pure definition of demonic cyberpunk. And I think that at this point you can see why. This race of aliens are cybernetic, shape-shifting, and giant techno-organic entities that love violence as all higher life forms do. They were created by the Phalanx, another alien race. But since they love violence, they also hate their creators just for the sake of it. It's so bad in fact that they don't even consider them their creators, and rather just a sucky version of their own species. Yeah, these aliens are racist. And they can also infect organic beings with a techno-organic virus that turns organic matter into technology that I'm guessing they then consume. This sh is actually insane, but they're my new favorite alien race. Number four, Czar. Spider-Man and Wolverine, the dream team, involved in a pretty intense storyline. The 2010 six-parter written by Jason Aaron begins with the orb robbing a bank, which I gotta say would be the weirdest and scariest deposit ever. Spider-Man and Wolverine are on the scene and things seem manageable at first, but when a bag of stolen glowing diamonds hits the ground, the daring duo are transported 60 million years back in time. Wolverine knows after taking one breath that this is not savage Land. Now they're hanging out and an asteroid is heading for Earth. So much later when Peter has now grown a beard in this altered timeline, Wolverine is also leading the group the small folk. The diamonds activate again and this time they're shot into the future. What is going on? Okay, so in issue two, the orb asked Peter about the diamonds. These diamonds belong to the Tsar. He had them attached to his teeth, real fashionable, real gangster-like. He also has a bat with those diamonds embedded in them. So he has arguably the most dangerous weapon I've ever seen. A bat with time-traveling diamonds sticking out of them. Okay, RIP. His sidekick, Big Murder, was also pretty fashionable. He rocks the Kanye glasses while commuting through the cosmos. It's a pretty good duo. I would never want to fight these guys in any reality, especially not the future. Getting close to the end into number three, Electro 2099. You want futuristic villains? One look at Electro 2099 and you'll be ruining your pants in more ways than one. Electro 2099's origin is the most future thing you could get, with his original form being a robot construction worker. But this robot's creators became frustrated and unsatisfied with his work, so they sent him to a robot torture experimenter. Yeah, this is starting to sound an awful lot like my trigger and I don't like that. But the torture this android went through however broke his obedience chip and as such the laws of robotics went out the window. This android then gained sentience and the ability to harness and siphon electrical energy turning him into the new Electro. He also ended up joining the 2099 version of the Sinister Six. This is absolutely ridiculous to me. Like why would, why would you send a robot? who isn't doing their job properly to be tortured. Why would you just not fix their coding or whatever it is in 2099? This is why AI is a bad idea. I'm telling you. However, he does look badass. Number two, Ultron. Making his first appearance in Avengers issue 54, Ultron in the comics was originally made by Dr. Hank Pym, but of course he became sentient and turned into a big brass bully. Ultron in the MCU wasn't nearly as cool as the comics, specifically the Age of Ultron storyline from 2013. The story opens up with the world gone dark. Spider-Man is kidnapped by a gang, Hawkeye performs a daring rescue, and then the two then meet up with the rest of the Avengers, or rather the remaining Avengers Ever. That's it. This future is dark and riddled with Ultron drones. Population is running real low. It's a stressful time. Ultron is ahead of the game here. Literally, he uses vision as a conduit to communicate with the past. He resides in the future comfortably and remains a ruler. This is one of my all-time favorite comics. The team goes back in time to talk to Pym, but Logan has other messy intentions. It's a ride, you must check it out. Finally, in at number one, Kang the Conqueror. You knew it was gonna happen. Nathaniel Richards was born in the 30th century of Earth 6311, a reality where humanity never went into the Dark Ages. After centuries of advancement and warfare, peace was brought to the land by a time traveler from Earth 616 named 
Nathaniel Richards. Because Richards brought peace to this war-torn future, he was known as a legend. The Nathaniel Richards born to this reality though is said to be a distant descendant of Reed Richards, although other records also indicate that he may be a descendant of the Latvian monarch known as Doctor Doom. Or maybe some of the shippers are right after all. At the age of 16, intervention from his future self as Kang the Conqueror resulted in a young Nathaniel trying to prevent his eventual transformation into Kang the Conqueror, briefly becoming the young hero known as Iron Lad. The kid also briefly had a stint as a supervillain known as Kidamortis. Basically, there are infinite versions of this character and all of them seem to have some form of beef. This is supposed to be the next main villain of the MCU apparently and hot damn, is this about to get crazy? As I'm sure you can already tell. Guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Those were the 10 most powerful futuristic Marvel villains. But before you go, make sure you drop a comment or two down below. Which of these are your favorites? Besides Kang, who do you think is coming to the MCU? Make sure you let us know your thoughts down below. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. And I have been and shall remain Connor Monroe. And I'll, then we'll probably be around again. Yeah, we'll see you next time on Top 10 Nerd. Bye, see ya.